All right, it's been a couple weeks since the last video talking about the 302. Um, got the pistons here, uh, cleaned them up, um, put, put new rings in them. New rings are done, taking the old rings out. Of course, they came out in multiple pieces. As you can see on them, there's rust and they were pretty nasty. And then I took a couple hours on uh, the other day to clean out all my ring grooves on these because they were they were pretty bad. Soaked the, the pistons, got everything nice and you know freed up, looking good. Um, got new bearings. Uh, what I did on the tractor itself, and excuse the mess in here because I've not been around much, but tonight we got a couple. The first two pistons in, uh, we'll film putting the other two pistons in. But I basically, I got a ball hone and I honed out the cylinders. Got a nice cross hatch going in those. Uh, I cleaned up the whole top surface here for, for my head gasket when I get to that. I'll walk around to the other side here and again, excuse the extreme mess I got going. So, um, you can see in the first cylinder there, we've got the, we got the pistons in. Um, I scraped off all the gasket around, uh, all around here. I got 2000 grit sandpaper and went around my rod journals and just made sure those were nice and smooth and cleaned up. Uh, where I think some water sat in there. It wasn't really rusted or pitted. Um, I've gotten, so everything right now has got assembly lube on it, on those journals. Uh, we've torqued the uh, the caps here to 75 foot-pounds um, on those first two. So those are good to go. And the next thing we'll do is, when we get back out here maybe tomorrow night, uh, put in the the back to show you how we're doing that. We'll actually film that. And um, trying to think if there's anything else we've done on this. Just a lot of cleaning them, little miscellaneous things since uh, the last video. I took a week vacation and uh, the whole time thought about working on this thing is that's how it goes. But that's where we're at. And I will, uh, in the next little portion here, we'll put those back to uh, pistons in. All right, so we put the third piston in, um, got the fourth one here ready to go. New rings in, got the new rod bearings in. They're lubed up with uh, assembly lube. Uh, so they're all ready to go. We've got everything kind of set where we need to have it set with uh, assembly grease inside the, the cylinder. And I've got my um, ring uh, tool there to put my rings down on this side I've got the crank set where I want the crank set for the rod to hit it I've got my journal with assembly grease on it so I've got the help of my beautiful wife and uh, we're gonna uh, put this thing together I'll get the camera set up and then we'll do this all right so I'm gonna carefully put the piston down in here so it doesn't hit the the crank and hurt anything and I'm going to have my beautiful assistant come over and push it back up for me so I can get the compression tool on there so if you can do what you did before which is yeah push it up just a little sign now so come in the opposite way that you did before there we go. So I've just compressed the rings and now uh, I'm going to get control of the bottom of the rod. 
while she taps down on it with the wood end of the lightly taps on it with the hammer. I want to make sure everything's lined up down here first. Okay. Making sure it's lined up. Give it a couple more taps. Keep going. So we're down there. All right, so we got it tapped down. We're on the top of the crank, got the bottom. These ha have to fit on a certain way. On the top of this, it's marked with a four for cylinder number four, one, two, three, four. And the piston, the rod should be marked the same way. Uh, before I put these in, since these are torqued, I'm going to put a little bit of WD-40 on the threads, make sure they're clean and that they're lubed up so that they will torque down correctly. And then I'm going to get these screwed in. Fortunate enough to have a helper. Usually Carl helps me with this stuff. Helped me with the front two cylinders last night, but tonight he had a meeting and I kind of wanted to get these in and I wanted to make this video. So she wasn't feel, thrilled about uh, being filmed, but fortunately she's very nice and she helped me do this. So I'm going to get those finger tight and I'm going to. Tighten them down a little bit more with the ratchet. I'm gonna try to evenly tighten them and this bottom one is definitely a lot looser. Okay, got those pretty well tight. I'm gonna get my torque wrench, 75 pounds of torque. So I'm gonna start at 40. Lines are not making it easy. Forty, then I'm going to go to fifty. Sixty. 
go to 70. And seventy And she's torqued to 75 on both bolts. So, I put the, that down. And I'm going to stop this. All right, there's the finished product. Got uh, all four cylinders in. Got everything tightened up and. Uh, Together down here, assembly lube on everything. I cleaned out the oil pan. I don't know if I mentioned that early, earlier. I cleaned out the oil pan. Kind of swabbed it out. Um, tried to clean it up as much as possible. Get any sludge out of there. And um, that's kind of where we're at. I didn't mention on the, uh, when I honed with the ball hone, um, the speed I went, this is a variably speed drill, and I literally, you can see the oil, some of the oil, because you lube up the uh, balls pretty good, but it was a pretty slow speed I ran it at, and uh, just ran it up and down in order to get my 45 degree cross hatching in there. So I didn't get to show that when I, when I did that the other day. Um, so that's kind of, where we're at right now uh, I've got to get the heads from the head shop next uh, I need to put my new ra radiator hoses on um, still quite a bit of little things to do here but um, slowly making progress on this 69302 so while I've been waiting to get the heads back for the uh, 69302 uh, which is taking a little bit longer. The valves, he thought were a little thin. So um, he asked me if I had a source for the valves. I said, sure, they're Chevy 350 valves, which he promptly walked over in his shop and picked a Chevy 350 valve up and walked over and compared it and said, holy smokes, that's awesome. So he's working on that. He's just backed up this uh, pandemic and everything going on has caused people, I think, to work on a lot of projects and he's backed up. But one of the things I did was I took off the radiator, I needed to take it off anyway because the bottom hose clamp was just completely stripped and rusted on there. So I had to take the radiator off so I could get the rear radiator hose on. And then I took off the, uh, the cast nose piece, which if anybody's ever done it, it's just a very fun uh, piece, awkward piece to, to deal with. I actually had uh, these two bolts on either side were... Uh, the heads were rusted so much that I had to do a lot of work to get them get them out. So while I had this all apart, uh, this area in here on either side was just packed full of chaff and rust and stuff that it was it was pretty nasty in there. So got the shot back out. I got all that cleaned up. Um, you can see the I have new bolts, but these are just so rusty. The the ones that were on there were uh, actually were kind of a uh, strip the socket wouldn't fit on there so while i had this off you know i've just you know while you're waiting on parts you're anxious to get things done so you do the next best thing and that's the little the little jobs i did uh one of the other little jobs i did is i put a new ignition switch in it um the old ignition switch fairly certain that wasn't going to work uh the key was stuck in there i ended up get, was able to get the key out but Kind of rewired it, made it a little better. Um, I need to get a light switch because that's really rusty and nasty. I'm pretty sure that when I get around to that stage of this, um, I'm gonna need to replace that. I'm trying not to go 
hog wild on fixing things on this thing yet. I want to get it running and I want to uh, drive it around a little and uh, use it and make sure the transmission and that everything's good. One of the things I need to do this weekend is crack the, uh, the gear oil uh, plug in the back and just see how much water's in there because one of the things, it, the gear shift boot was just toast. So I can imagine a little bit of moisture got down in there. So I'm gonna need to check out actually how much made it in. So once we get the heads, we'll be rolling. I'm gonna to try to set the, the cast piece and the radiator back on uh, maybe today with the, uh, the new to me gantry. Uh, that'll be an easy way to do it um, by myself. And uh, hopefully those heads are coming and I can work on uh, getting this thing back together. It's again, kind of like the jet star sitting in the background that's split waiting on the shaft and bushings to be made. This thing's ready to go. I just need parts. Um, so hopefully, hopefully here soon. Again, I wanted to have this one done. Uh, and then I unfortunately just bought a 55 UB that is coming next, which my wife, uh, I think her, her quote was, I just don't understand. And, uh, and looking at my shop right now and the mess that I have going, I, I can kind of see what she's saying, but you guys know how it is. When, when things pop up, sometimes you just can't say no. Case in point right here. <laughs> and uh, eh, it'll all work out. So I cracked the uh, gear case uh, plug on this 302. That down there, that is water. And that uh, draining out is water. So yeah, she's got some water in her. Just gonna let her trickle out here for a little bit and until she turns black and we'll go from there. But so far I would say there's, oh, a good soda can full of water in there, if not more, and it's still dripping pretty good out. Just stopped. No, nope, she's coming back. So question answered. First time I've had water like this in the rear end. So there you have it.